want to welcome you all to the videotape room, American Broadcasting Company. I will try to uh, explain some of our operation here, some of the uh, functions that take place, and the mechanics of the videotape room. The uh, picture you have on the monitor at the present time is our switching control center. It's located physically in the tape room <coughs> and used primarily to start the machines with this switcher right here. They're individually selective and can be assigned to any stage as well as being started in any group from the room itself. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, down through, will now start with this red button. We have the Tektronik 525 <coughs> scope that's on the line to look at any individual picture that might be coming in, the waveform of the picture, that is, as well as the Conrack monitor for video check. We can select any of the feeds that are available to us. We have a feed from Master Control, a spare feed from Master Control. We have a net direct feed, a feed from Studio A, B, the E line that I'm using right at the present time, and also an air feed, and two lines set up on patch cords. One switcher feeds each machine. This top switcher is machine number one, machine number one, and so on, on down. <clears throat> we have the identical feeds on all the buttons of these switchers, as you saw on the preview switcher. The racks here contain the distribution amplifiers for all the various functions that you have just seen on these switchers. Now, we have uh, arranged our machines in a configuration of four in a group. We operate the machines in pairs. This machine I have my hand on is number one. Facing it is number two. The racks along the wall are the associated video gear for these two machines. In normal operation, we would use one and two simultaneously on the same program. That is, we would take one machine for air copy and the other machine for protection. When we record, we start both these machines at the same time by delegating the two machines we want to start onto the switcher. We start the machines. The operator then places the machines in the record mode. The machines record the entire program. <coughs> Now, as I've explained, we use the two machines in conjunction with each program, one for air and one for protection. The machines are started up simultaneously on playback. Now, uh, as yet, the machines do not start at exactly the same rate of speed. Therefore, there may be a difference of a quarter of a second in time between the two machines when the picture comes up to speed. Therefore, it's necessary for the operator to check the protection machine and either run it forward or back to synchronize perfectly with the machine that's on the air. That's necessary so that the operational director and the technical director in the studio that the program is being fed through may always have a duplicate picture to go to in case something should happen with the machines. And it does happen occasionally. We try to keep machine troubles to a minimum, but it's not always possible to have the machines in tip-top condition. A tube replaced this morning may go out this afternoon, as you all probably know. The uh, machines are laid out in this configuration. Number one, for convenience, and number two, this is all the space we had to put them in. We have the speakers for the individual machines mounted on the tops of the racks facing each other. For an operator to synchronize his machines, he need only stand in the middle, turn up the audio enough on each machine so that he can hear it, 
and very perfectly synchronized to audio on the machines. That's the reason for the speakers facing one another. Another reason for the speakers to face this direction is to keep down ambient room noise. And it gets pretty rough at times. As a matter of convenience, we have certain tools which we install on each of the machines. One is a socket wrench used for removing the bolts which hold the head in place. Very handy to have this wrench on the machine in case you need to replace a head in a hurry. That sometimes happens. We also have certain Allen wrenches which are used in making adjustments and to remove or install certain parts of the machine. We have a cleaning solution which we use to remove the oxide, the uh, certain collection of dirt that collects on the machines. When the tape operates through the machine, oxide peels and it builds up on the audio heads. It also builds up on the video heads. Therefore, it's necessary to keep these items very clean. A buildup of oxide on the audio head or video head can cause a serious interruption of program material. Therefore, it is our policy to clean all parts of the machine, including the capstan, the heads, and the drives, each time the machine is put into operation, whether it be for record or playback. These lights that you see are not used in their normal condition at the present time. They're normally turned down over the machines for operating. We need a little light in here to do this pickup, so put some big bulbs in them and point them at the ceiling. As I mentioned earlier, the racks contain the gear which runs the machines. To operate this particular machine, we have first the rack which contains the Conrack video monitor, the 525 waveform amplifier, which is a Tektronix scope, the audio amplifier for monitor purposes. The next rack contains power supplies, the master control unit, the captain servo unit. The next rack over associated with this machine contains the power supplies, blanking switcher, switcher, modulator, demodulator, process amplifier, and the auto comp mechanism. Now we have here labels which are used on the machines or on the tapes rather to identify each roll of tape. This label contains important information. The name of the program, the show number, the machine recorded on, the initial of the engineer recording the show <clears throat> so that we can check back at a future date and find out what possibly happened during the time of recording the recording date of the show, the playback date, which is very important, the physical tape number of the tape itself. We assign a number to each reel of tape. When it comes in and is evaluated, we assign a number to it. That number also goes on the reel or on the label. And this stays with the tape until it's erased. I'll pass around some of these labels so that you can see what we do with them. This reel that you see on the racks is very important also. That is our standard tip projection tape. That contains information recorded at proper tip projection, so the machines may be set to the identical tip projection each time. It contains a proper control track level. It contains an audio tone of the proper recorded level for a fast check on your machines. It's an invaluable piece to have with your machines when you're trying to set up standards so that everything you make will be identical. This machine right here, incidentally, is recording the show, recording the tape that uh, you are now looking at. I'll remove this cover.
Now, I think you can see rather well the vacuum system. This is the vacuum pump right here. My hand is on. This is the vacuum cleaner, which removes surplus oxide and dust and dirt from the video head while you're recording or playing back. We have here, in this other large gray box, a blower. It's a dual centrifugal blower, and through these hoses, it forces a blast of cold air through the electronic parts of the machine so that they just don't melt. The temperature inside this console would go to a fantastic value were it not for the blower that we have built in. The air is drawn up from the floor, the cool air, through a filter, and then circulated throughout the machine. This is the switch that Dick Wilson was pointing out to you before. We've installed this switch on our machines to release the electronic or the electric brakes on the take up and hold back. This is a great aid in editing because it allows the tape to be worked back and forth for finding cues without the strain that there would be where the brakes on. This is the driver amplifier. And these are the controls used for optimizing the individual channels on the head. I'm going to have Gene Biskiart remove the left-hand control panel and show you the simplicity of getting at these machines for service. Go ahead, Gene. Let's take the bezel off. Now, there you are. The panel is out for service. As you can see, it would be very easy to work on this particular amplifier. All the tubes are available in this section. The electronic components are available on the back side. Very easy to get at. This left-hand control panel contains our scope for checking operation of the machine, head stability, and so forth. As you can see on the screen, there is the Lissajou pattern, which indicates that the machine is stable. Where that pattern to rotate, flip, and flop would indicate that our head drum was not locked, not synchronized, and our recording would, in all probab probability, be loused up. On playback, we have a control mark tracking. That's to permit the head to ride down the recorded track, dead center, and not off to one side or the other. It's nothing but a phase shift network, which causes the tape to either ride forward slightly or back slightly in time in relation to the head rotation. This meter right over here, I guess you can see that on the screen, indicates the current on the various heads during record. You can see the meter change as I switch through the different heads. That uh, calibration on that meter is not critical. It, it really uh, is only an indication that you are getting record current to the heads. I think we've covered uh, just about all that you could possibly see on the machine now with the camera. The right-hand control panel is essentially the same as the left, except for the fact that it controls all the audio gear. That is the audio record amplifiers, the bias amplifiers, playback amplifiers, and so forth. And all your stop and start functions are on this right-hand control panel. The light that you see right here is the record indicator which shows that we are recording on this machine. Well, this concludes the portion from the videotape room. As I say, I'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. This has been an ABC videotape edited production. Audio and video effects were not mechanically reproduced.